Hello, I'm Johnny, and today's topic is the Western Conference play-in race, overcoming a 20-point deficit for a Warriors comeback victory. Suns, Warriors, and Clippers who has a chance to claim the fourth seed. Yesterday, we talked about the Most Improved Player of the Year award, so if you haven't watched it yet, be sure to check it out. Today, we'll continue to focus on the Western Conference play-in. After the Timberwolves defeated the Kings 119-115 yesterday, they improved their record to 39-37, not only achieving a four-game winning streak but also rising to the sixth seed in the West. A key factor in this victory was Kyle Anderson, who scored 15 points and dished out 11 assists in the absence of KAT. Although his scoring wasn't high, Anderson's passing made his teammates' jobs easier on the court. Jaden McDaniels, known for his defensive prowess, also scored 20 points, including a memorable dunk. Naz Reed contributed 18 points off the bench, allowing the Timberwolves to secure the win without KAT. Fans should know that throughout March, Naz Reed has been averaging 15 points per game and shooting over 40% from beyond the arc. With KAT's return, the Timberwolves have a strong front court featuring Rudy Gobert, KAT, Kyle Anderson, and Naz Reed, so fans should pay more attention to this team. Speaking of winning streaks, the Pelicans achieved their fifth consecutive win yesterday by defeating the Trailblazers, not only returning to a .500 winning percentage but also securing a spot in the top eight in the West. After the Timberwolves' victory yesterday, the Warriors, who were previously sixth, fell to seventh place. The Warriors are set to face the Pelicans, who are on a five-game winning streak, today in a crucial matchup for both teams. The Warriors are currently only 0.5 games ahead of the Pelicans, and although they have a 2-1 head-to-head -head record this season, losing today would cost them not only their head-to-head -head advantage but also push them down to the 8th seed. In this game, Steve Kerr made adjustments to the starting lineup, promoting Jonathan Kaminga to the starting 5 and moving Kevin Looney to the bench, resulting in a smaller lineup for the Warriors. Although the two teams were tied at 23 points apiece in the first quarter, the Pelicans went on a 13-2 run, finishing the quarter with an 11-point lead, 36-25. The second quarter saw a lot of action, with Draymond Green's foul leading to a physical altercation between him and Brandon Ingram. The referees issued technical fouls to both players. After another incident between Green and a Pelicans player, Herbert Jones, where Green appeared to hook Jones' neck with his foot, the conflict fortunately did not escalate further. Towards the end of the second quarter, the Pelicans' CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram hit three consecutive three-pointers, giving the Pelicans a 20-point lead at 63-43, which was the largest margin of the game. At halftime, the Pelicans led the Warriors by 17 points, 63-46. As mentioned earlier, the Warriors were playing at home today, and their home court advantage is well known. In the early part of the third quarter, Klay Thompson hit two consecutive three-pointers, helping the Warriors narrow the gap to just eight points, trailing the Pelicans 65-73. At the end of the third quarter, it was Curry's turn to show off, as he sank two three-pointers. One of the shots was thanks to Kevin Looney, who secured an offensive rebound and created the opportunity. Jordan Poole also scored a dunk, and the Warriors closed the gap to just a four-point deficit, 85-89, at the end of the third quarter. The Warriors had a strong 39-26 run in the third quarter, displaying their dominance on the offensive end. Since both Curry and Klay Thompson had already stepped up, it was time for Jordan Poole, the younger brother, to respond. After all, a crucial mistake during the game against the Timberwolves led to the team's loss. So, Jordan Poole had to help the team secure a victory at home today. In the beginning of the fourth quarter, not only did Jordan Poole score from mid-range, but his drive to the basket also helped the team take the lead for the first time since the first quarter. Midway through the fourth, with the Warriors leading by four points, it was Jordan Poole again who sank a three-pointer. This shot was made possible by Curry, who secured an offensive rebound and passed the ball to Poole on the perimeter. Speaking of Curry, it was now his time to shine, scoring seven points in a row, including a three-pointer. He also delivered a beautiful pass to Thompson, and the Warriors defeated the Pelicans 120-109 at home, completing a comeback victory. The Warriors' record now stands at 40 wins and 37 losses, and they have climbed back up to 6th place in the Western Conference. Curry, the hero of the game with 39 points, including 8 three-pointers and 8 assists, was certainly the star. However, I would like to focus on Draymond Green, who had the highest plus-minus of the game. Although he only scored 8 points, he dished out 13 assists. In one play in the early fourth quarter, after setting a screen for Jordan Poole, Green headed straight to the paint. He successfully attracted the defense and passed the ball to a cutting Jonathan Kaminga, who finished with a beautiful dunk. In another play, Green worked with Thompson, heading to the paint after setting a screen. Kaminga cut to the basket again and finished with another dunk. 
On another possession, when Jordan Poole drove in without an opportunity, he passed the ball to Kaminga, who then passed it to Green. The key here is that after passing the ball, Poole went to the perimeter. The Pelicans' defense didn't adjust in time, and Green saw Poole open, delivering another assist. Although Green didn't score much, his passing ability and court vision played a significant role in the Warriors' comeback win. Klay Thompson scored 17 points, and Jordan Poole had 21. Both Green and Poole, who made costly mistakes in the previous game against the Timberwolves, performed very well today. Congratulations to the Warriors fans. As for the Pelicans, it's a pity, as they were once leading by as much as 20 points. However, playing in the Warriors' home court can be tough, once the home crowd gets going, it's not easy for the visiting team to withstand the pressure. Brandon Ingram scored 26 points, and CJ McCollum had 21. The Pelicans' record is now 38 wins and 38 losses, ranking 8th in the Western Conference. Now let's discuss the Clippers. This season, the Clippers have a record of 2 wins and 2 losses against the Warriors, and 1 win and 2 losses against the Timberwolves. This indicates that the Clippers are currently in a more passive position, and their upcoming schedule is not easy. In addition to 2 games against the Grizzlies, they also need to face the Pelicans, Lakers, and Suns. To be honest, it's a tough schedule. Moving on to the Warriors, they currently have a 2-2 record against the Timberwolves, Clippers, and Pelicans, and a 1-3 record against the Suns. Therefore, their head-to-head -head results can't really add points for the Warriors. However, the Warriors have an easier schedule than the Clippers, so I personally believe they have a chance to make it into the top 5. Lastly, let's look at the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves currently only have a head-to-head -head advantage against the Clippers, so if they want to make it into the top 6, their upcoming game against the Suns will be crucial. Overall, I personally think the Suns have a higher chance of being the fourth seed. However, there's a small problem, if the Suns are fourth, will any team really want to face them in the first round? Or would they prefer to drop to the sixth seed and play the Kings? This is something fans can watch out for. Alright, that's it for the middle-tier teams in the Western Conference. In reality, aside from three teams with 40 wins, there are also three teams with 37 wins, namely the Lakers, Thunder, and Mavericks. The competition in the Western Conference is indeed very intense, isn't it? Although the Lakers, Thunder, and Mavericks are not far behind the sixth seed Warriors, with only about a two-game difference, as the number of games decreases, it would be very difficult for the Lakers, Thunder, and Mavericks to directly break into the top six unless one of them goes on a winning streak. This is why we are specifically discussing the Suns, Clippers, and Warriors in this episode. In short, as long as their condition is not too bad, they should all have a chance to enter the playoffs as a top six seed. As for which teams will participate in the play-in tournament, let's find out together.